guys. Smooth. Welcome to Geography Explained. This week we are going to be doing an AMA. Lots of students have asked for this to get to know a little bit about us, so um, we have a couple full of questions. A couple of questions. Question cup. A couple of questions. Oh. Uh, we're going to ask each other these questions that you have sent in on Instagram. Alright, let's do it. Do it. It is. <laughs> That's not going to okay. work. Spin around. Yeah, spin. Alright. <laughs> Three, two, one. AMA. Is, it, is this film? Okay, so we've had a bunch of questions come in on the, uh, both on email and on the Insta. Uh, we've selected, is it 10? Yeah, 10. We've got a bunch more that we might do a second AMA for, which we have a bit of a surprise for that one. We'll tell you about it at the end. Yes, that's, you get, strap in for that. That's going to be great. <laughs> so we've got 10-ish questions. We'll put them in a cup, as we just said, and we're going to draw them out at random, and we're going to, we'll, I'll ask Sam, Samantha, and then we'll... We'll basically both answer and we'll go back and forth. Okay. Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Question. We're starting off fun. Um, this is favorite song. Okay. Can we go first? You go first. Favorite okay. song. My favorite song of all time is Tiny Dancer, which is by Elton John. But growing up, my parents exclusively listened to country music. So until I was 18, I thought it was by Tim McGraw. Wow. Which is really sad. That's... Um, my favorite song right now is Waving Through the Window, which is from uh, Dear Evan Hansen, a musical. You should check it out. It's really good. I Yours is going to be like ACDC or something rubbish. Um, what is it? Did, you're not going to mention Hamilton at all? Oh, everything on Hamilton as well. Everything on Hamilton. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to put a, 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 an actual favorite of all time. Obviously, you've got the entire T Swift catalog, including Shake It Off. That's, um, that's going to be up there. Um, uh, there's the classics. I'm a huge fan of Piano Man. Oh yeah. Dominate, dominate that at karaoke. Once I sang at karaoke, and they're like, "Are you actually Billy Joel?" I'm like, "I'm, I'm not. Billy Joel's American." You look like him. What? Well, oh, thank you. Um, favorite song of all time, I reckon, Foo Fighters. Oh. And it's a tie. Shut up. You just said you oh. said Hamilton the musical. All right. <laughs> I reckon it's a tie. Two Foo Fighters songs. Everlong. Everlong. And. I don't know, Hero. And Hero. Oh my god. Well done. And <laughs> we spent too much time together. All of Metallica is up there too. But, okay. But those two, I reckon. So, yeah. Right. Happy with that. Alright, your your yeah. cup. The cup is yours. Alright, let's get on to the next one. The next question we have is... Mr. Sizio. Mm. If you could go back in time, Ooh. what would you tell your high school self? So, we're going far back now in history. Mm. To when you were in high school. That's a really good question. What would you tell yourself? Uh, that's an excellent question. Invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, like buy Google. Mm. If like when Google's like 20 bucks, buy it, obviously. So if it's not just straight up for my own personal financial gain and it's more advice, I would say um, I was quite different in high school. Was like, you know, especially in junior school, I used to stress out about stuff, think stuff was more important than it used to be or than it, than it actually was. Here's, here's a bit of advice that I, I definitely would give myself. Um, don't worry because everyone else is basically just winging it too. No one really knows what they're doing in life, ever. Everyone's just doing the best they can. So just do the best you can and you'll be completely fine. If you don't know how to do something, just wing it until you figure it out. It's surprisingly good advice. It sounds flippant, but it, trust me, it's true and it's valuable. Yeah, it's really true. Mm. It's good advice. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, you're Samantha. Mm. Um, mine's pretty similar. I was a massive stress head. I'm still am though. I, don't, I haven't changed. Um, but I was very much a perfectionist in high school and put way too much pressure on myself over every little thing. Which I still kind of do. But I would definitely, I can tell myself to just calm down. Um, everything's going to be okay. You don't have to get 100% on every test, and you're not going to get 100% on every test. And just to be nicer to yourself. Do you know in year eight, I once got two out of 140 in a Japanese test? Two. Two. I tried. You could guess more than that. I know, that, no, but I. Was it multiple choice? No, it was like you had to know all the symbols and what they meant. I never There's failed a test. Two out of 140. In my entire life. <laughs> I did. There's that. But you probably enjoyed high school more than me. I had a great time. Oh, high school was great. I just, like, I needed to chill out and, and not worry about stuff as much. I think it's right. everyone in high school. Yes. yes. I think so. All right. Question three. <laughs> are we married? We are. are. We, are we married? We, we are. Married. Yeah. 
We are. Just not to each to, other. To other people? <laughs> to other people. Like, I am we, married and... Yeah, yeah, I'm married. Yeah. Married, yeah. Uh, we get this all the time. Not just mm. to each other, but just other teachers. Yeah. Because, like, you talk to another teacher and um, students will be like, damn, they must be married. Mm. It's not really how that works. So we are both married. We're, we're work married. We're, yeah, we just do spend all the time together. So my husband's name is Jay. And your wife's name is? Ange. And we're actually all really good friends. Mm. So Ange actually, is actually my favourite Sizio. I'm pretty sure, like, <laughs> my wife likes Sammy better than she likes me. Which is fine, I understand. It's 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 yeah. it's pretty much a normal normal thing, so it's fine. It's good. So yeah, we all get along really well. Yeah, it's cool. good good times. But no, we're not married to each other, because no. we'd kill each other. It wouldn't be good. Very wouldn't quickly. be a good idea. Alright. Your turn. Pause. Pause. Okay, next question, Mr. Sizio. How old are you? Hmm. Have you ever been asked this by a student, Sizio? Not that I can remember. No, me maybe either. maybe once or twice. I've been I've been told that I'm older than him, which is not true. So come on, is serious now. It's serious now. Mm. How old are you? I am between twenty and forty. Closer to one of the numbers than the other. Mm. But you can work that out. I'm twenty seven. Yeah. I'm happy to say that I'm twenty seven. Yeah. It's born in nineteen ninety one. Let the record say that I'm also happy to say that I'm twenty seven. <laughs> no, no. I just but can we, I'm happy to say let's that. Let's agree. You are older than me. Can we admit that? Am I though? Yes, you are. Who knows? Well, not more mature I'm than me. Basically, <laughs> have you seen X Men? You know how Wolverine doesn't know how old he is. Yeah, except you have a birth certificate, and we know, and wow. it's not twenty-seven. Mm. So, okay. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Keep him coming. Someday he'll answer. <laughs> this is a very topical question. <sighs> One of my favourites. Are you ready? Is Steve Smith the GOAT? I didn't pick this question. Is Steve Smith the GOAT? Uh, no, I don't think he is. I don't think he is the greatest of all time. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's not, because Donald Bradman. Yes. I've had to say that, Westy. Donald Bradman, he's mad if I didn't say that. Um, look, I don't care about cricket. And it's not like a, it's boring, like I watch golf, so I'm not going to get up on a pedestal, but I just don't really care. So Steve Smith, I know he won for Australia. Um, Basically, in the test, hit lots of runs and bowled people out. No. Not wow. He doesn't. No, he doesn't do that. He bowls. He, no, he bats. He bats. He batted lots of sixes. <laughs> Steve Smith is the goat of the generation and many generations before. No one is the Don. The Don is ridiculous. Like, you look at the Don Bradman stats. Steve Smith is the second best batsman of all time. But he averages... Wait for it. We're just going to leave this in for once. Mm. Yeah, that happens a lot. Now, he averages 60 to, uh, 63, which is ridiculous, but Don Bradman averaged 99. It's ridiculous. Yeah, cool. Ridiculous. So, Steve Smith, great batsman. My favourite part of cricket... 99.94. My favourite part of a cricket has Two been when places. the 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 bowler walked back and all you can see is the pink sausage dog behind him. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it's an ad for an insurance company. Yeah, it's great. Sausage Sunday. Stay yeah. tuned for that. All right, next question. Next question. Oh, getting serious now. Mm. Sizio, mm. what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life? Mm. It's a good question. It is a deep question. Um, it's not 42, but here's what, in my opinion, what it is. Experience. You get essentially one existence. So you make the best of whatever, uh, you make the best of that existence as you possibly can. Whatever you decide to do, is what the meaning of life is for you. Whether you dedicate it to your friends, your family, you, know, you having fun traveling, your children, your education. Whatever you decide your meaning of life is, that is your meaning of life. No one else dictates it for you. It doesn't exist somewhere out there in the universe. It's just all up to you. So make it the best you possibly can. Excellent. Philosophical. Great answer. Question, question, I don't know. Let's say seven. Mm, haven't counted. Okay. Oh, crap. Samantha, yeah. what is your favourite book? Yes, this is a better question. I have two favourite books. I have three. Okay, can I have three? You can have as many as you want. It's our AMA. Thousands. We're not going to run out of YouTube film. My three favourite books of all time. The first one is Catcher in the Rye, because I read it when I was in high school, and I've read it a few times since then, and is, I just think it's a great did story. Did he catch the... Does it fall and he catches He catches it? people's innocence and stops them from... Growing up, basically, because he doesn't want to grow up. Anyway, uh, Looking for Alaska by John Green is another great one. Also read it? that when I was in high school. All my favourite books I've read in high school, which is... Um, it's just there. Yeah, Alaska's a person. Spoiler alert. 
Spoiler alert. She swears it. It's also coming out on Hulu soon. So you should, if you don't like reading, which is lame, you should watch it. Um, and my, my last one is called The Art of Racing in the Rain, which is about a race car driver, but told from a perspective of his dog, his golden retriever. So he'd be very, very, um, uh, have a very positive view of him then, because dogs yeah. love everybody. Every, yeah, everything he does is so This is great, his best thing ever. This is great, yeah. Okay. Can I, can, can I go? Yeah. Okay. Favourite, <laughs> favourite book? Well, I think I know the answer. I bet you don't. Predict, like, predict my favorite. It's that book. one about like the, the science of everything, the, the everything in the world. God damn it, that's that's actually true. What's it called? Uh, a short history of nearly everything. Boom! See, I know him so well. You wouldn't have been guess mine. Mm, I, I would have. Mm, would you go catch you in the right? I would have said Hamilton the book. That's my book. Probably is. So my fa I, I probably got three as well. Um, the first is. Uh, as, as Samantha said, it is The Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. It's basically a armchair rundown of every major science and scientific advancement and discovery over the last it's pretty good. 500 years, I suppose. It's written in a very entertaining way. The point was, um, at, I was pretty rubbish at school. I didn't know a lot. I didn't get good marks. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just didn't think education was super important. After I finished school, and therefore I had didn't have people telling me that I needed to learn stuff. I just decided to start learning stuff for its own sake. That book, I know this is a cliche thing to say, but that one book probably changed my life in a way because it made me super curious about the world as a whole. I really wanted to know just everything about everything. I was just super curious. And it was largely directly down to that book. So Bill Bryson, Short History of Everything, came out in 2003, but most of the science in there is you know, still very, very current and, and excellent. Highly recommend. Um, two other little ones. I I very much like um, The Better Angels of Our Nature by Steven Pinker, which is a book on human violence. And basically, uh, it's, it's a very long book, but it's all about how much better life is now than it ever used to be. Basically, how all forms of human violence have declined from war to, you know, interpersonal violence, but also essentially societies and how they're much more peaceful and you're much likely to live longer. It's very good human geography kind of stuff. Um, very, very interesting. The last one is probably a book called The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, um, written by um, Stephen Novella, um, who has a podcast a by the same name. No, it's not a novella. Uh, it's, just his, it's just his name. Um, but it is about... Um, using logic and critical thinking and understanding logical fallacies. One of the worst things about society as a whole is people can't tell what's true from what isn't. It's the worst thing about the internet. Like the anti-vaxxers and fake moon landing conspiracy people. It drives me insane. So his, uh, the, the skeptic side of the universe is all about understanding what's true, what isn't, and how to tell the difference. I really can't recommend it enough. It's excellent. So, we're pretty different in a lot of ways. I think that was just one of them. And you'll see this, like, if you get to know us more, if you've had both of us as teachers. But so, you definitely like a non fiction person? I, I, I can't. The, the last fiction book I read, and I, I read, and we've had this discussion, I listen to a lot of audio books when I'm in the car and stuff like that. I that's agree now. That's reading. I count that's that as a reading. I consume many books. So, sure. I, I, I usually go through one or two a month just in the car listening on audio. I reckon the last 70 to 100 books I've read in a row are non-fiction, and I can only remember reading maybe one or two works of fiction. The last one was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That was probably the best part of 10 years ago. That was the second time through. I always read non-fiction, science, uh, so sociology, psychology, um, you know, religion, something like that. I just like Whereas I love fiction, fiction. I absolutely. Love, I like love being in a different world to my own, and I love going on a story, but it's from a perspective that is not my own because I only get to live my life from how I view things. So to be able to view the world and a series of events from somebody else's perspective, I find to be really useful and enjoyable. So um, yeah, just going to show they're both really valid, and you should get into audiobooks because audiobooks. I have audiobooks a lot now too. Audible, yeah. get on it. It's good. Yeah. Mm. Um, awesome, right. okay. Is it yeah, my, your turn, because I see the book thing. Okay, cool. The book thing. That's a good question. Question oh, eight ish. Um, oh, okay. You can do first. Is that, I don't know. Premier League. Oh. Top four. 2019 to 2020. Or do you want me to go first? My prediction? Yeah, no. Why don't you go first in predicting the top four Premier League teams of 2019 to 20 season? Okay, well, you know, I know some stuff. Uh, Liverpool <laughs> won this season. No, they didn't. They did. They came second. 
They won. They came second. Um, no. By a point. Because John Green was really happy about it. Yeah, that's because they won the Champions League. That's oh, not yeah. the league. So they won Man City won the league. No, 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 but I, I think it's valid to say that if they won the Championships League, they must be doing no, really no, no, well. No, 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 Champions League. So they must be doing well. So I'm going to say they're going to be in my top four. Okay. Um, what's the team I like about blowing bubbles? That's West Ham. West Ham? Because I have to say that my dad would be mad. Um, Man City, because I just like, found out they won like last 15. year. And... Yeah. Um, oh, I actually don't even know another one. Essex. You don't know... Essex. <laughs> Essex isn't a team. <laughs> That's my dad's from. Essex? No, no, not a team. Um... Is there a Northern Ireland one? Londonderry. Yeah, in, in the <laughs> Penguins. In, in the Irish in the Irish league in the yeah. Irish Premier League, there is Ireland teams. No, Northern Ireland. Yeah, no, they're in the Irish. Okay, Irish they're Irish. Irish. That's good. Um, <laughs> building bridges. Brexit. Yeah. Free cricket. Okay. Oh, My, soccer. Mate, yeah, it's fo football. 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 Okay, sorry. Okay. Round ball. Keep with your foot. Football. Sizio. Okay. Right. Informed decision. So. <laughs> Top four. Uh, I. It's going to be hard to see Man City getting beat again. However, they haven't made any huge major signings. Manchester United. No. That's my fault. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. a team. Um, I, I don't know whether it's more hope. I'm not a Liverpool fan. Of course, I support the turn. Newcastle United, excellent. Um, I'm hopeful that Liverpool actually win um, because, I don't know, I think they're just more of an actual club than Man City. Man City were very, top to beat, uh, very hard to beat. I reckon it's going to be Liverpool 1, Man City 2, but that might be vice versa again. Um, as much as it pains me to say it, because I hate both of these teams, I really don't like them at all. Sorry for everyone that supports them. I reckon three and four Arsenal. will be Arsenal and Tottenham. Oh, yeah. Probably in that order. Okay. Um, Arsenal, Arsenal has made some big signings. They're a very attacking team. They've got not much in defence, but they'll probably win games like 5-4 and stuff. Um, I'm hoping that the mighty Newcastle United will finish fifth. They won't, but I'm hoping they will. They'll probably finish 15th, not 5th, but it'll be fine. So, yeah. Next question. Next question. We have, it's football. We have two left. Two left, last two. What made you want to start teaching? That's an excellent question. Well, I've, mine's I've, long. I've got a great story about this. Um, so, I worked in politics before I started teaching. And so I was travelling around a lot. I was union president at my university and... I spent a lot of my time listening to adults argue about things that didn't matter. Um, not often things that did matter. There, were, there are things that matter in politics, but it was often the things that didn't matter about arguing about. And I had just finished my degree in geography and I really wanted to do something that was going to have an impact and change the world. And I was sitting there listening to these adults act like children and decided I didn't want to be in politics anymore. So um, I decided last minute that I would apply to see if I could do teaching. And I, it was the last day applications were open, so I applied. Um, I got to go on practice. I did a one, I did a degree in science, and then I did a one year diploma. And because it's only one year, you do two weeks, and then you go on your first prac to like see what teaching's like. And I kind of told myself like, just go on that prac, and if you hate it, you can just drop out because I wasn't that sure I wanted to be a teacher. Um, but I loved it. And I got there straight away, first day, went home, and I was like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And I haven't looked back since. So Excellent. That's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I've told this story a number of times in previous classes and stuff like that. So if you have heard me tell this story, then so. Was um, but for me, I used, I used to work at Domino's. Really? I know. Domino's? I, I barely ever say that. He never mentions that. Mm. So I worked at Domino's for probably 12 years, or something like that. That was a long time. Um, but I got to the point that I was uh, an area manager. I had four stores. Um, I really like having one store and my own staff. Shout out to the old Domino's Warner's Bay crew. They're awesome. Sure they're watching. They are. Everyone watches, <laughs> of course. Um, but they were great. And I really enjoyed working at Domino's when I had one store. When I had four stores, it sucked. I was doing paperwork that was generally um, boring and really not that necessary. Um, if there was a problem at a store, I had to be there, so I was always at the store that sucked. I'd get, on average, 20 phone calls a day, uh, seven days a week, starting at six in the morning and finishing at about two in the morning. Um, it was just constant. I had two weeks off in the last three years that I did that job. Um, like I said, managing one store was fine, managing four stores was terrible. I was sitting in my office one day, it was the 30th of December, 2008. That's exact. It was a Tuesday. It was in year 11. It was a Tuesday. <laughs> um, it was about two in the afternoon. And I was about to send off a report that I'd spent the last couple of hours putting together. And I knew that 
you know, a couple of the managers would see it, but you know, for the time I'd put in, it was not really worthwhile. Um, I was sitting in an office by myself, no one to talk to, bored out of my mind, and I suddenly hit me in this realization I actually hated it. Like I, I sort of vaguely been aware up to that point, but I just sat back and went, actually, I really hate this. I hate what I'm doing. Um, so I thought, right, if I go back to having one store, I'll enjoy it again, but I won't earn enough, earn enough money. If I go, if I pick up another store or buy my own store, it's more of what I hate. So I get paid more, but I'd still hate it. And there's not enough money in the world to make me hate one third of my life that you spend at work. So I thought, crap, I can't go back, I can't go forward, and I can't stay what I'm doing. I have to quit. I have to do, I have to do something else. So I started to think, what else could I do? What, what, my, what, what would my skills apply to? And I thought, well, I like arguing. I could be a lawyer. <laughs> and I thought, actually, no, that's a lot of time at uni and, you know, it's just awful. Um, you so, just argue with people online. Yeah, exactly. I can do that for free. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was about eight to nine seconds of considering that. Then I, I dropped that idea. Then I thought, well, I've run a business full of teenagers for 10 years. I could teach business to teenagers. And went, yep, that sounds legit. And I applied for uni at five, three hours later, to be a teacher. Ooh, both really rash decisions. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I, I figured if I didn't do it now, I'd talk myself yeah, out of it. Yeah, it's the same. It's just, let's just do it. It's yeah. happens. Happened to be uni intake time at the, at the time, so I didn't same. have to wait. I got accepted into uni within four or five days. Same. Without using my uh, ATAR. Never Not same. <laughs> Never used my ATAR for anything. Um, and yeah, within a week, I had been accepted into the teaching pro program at Newcastle Uni, um, majoring in business, where I ended up doing, obviously going more geo, uh, as a, which I did as a minor. But yeah, day that changed my life and best decision I've ever made. Pretty similar actually, that's mm. surprising. All right, we've got one last question. Last question. Last question. Last last question. question. question 10. And it's another teaching one. So this is school, we'll finish okay. up a teaching one. And it's, um, what challenges do you face being a teacher? You go first, and I'll have a think about it. Um, I think <laughs> workload is probably the thing that I... And, and the reason for that is, like, if you think about... So my current load at the moment, I have two senior classes, five junior classes. So I have seven classes that I'm having to prepare lessons for, do a lot of paperwork for that we won't go into. Um, and the problem with it is, is you end up really, really liking all of your students, and you really care about your students, and you want to do what's best for them. And I'm quite a creative person. Like I like looking at teaching creative. We both do. That's why we're on YouTube. And I'll be constantly coming up with ideas. Like I want to do this in my year nine class. I want to help my year 11s. I want to make this resource for year 12. And it's really hard because you have always like thousands of ideas, but it's only so many hours in a day. So it's really like working out how to prioritize, you know, what to do with your time, where to spend your time. Um, and unfortunately, like you're not going to be able to do every single idea you want to do. Uh, it's working out which ones are going to be the most useful for their actual learning um, and pursuing those. I think that would be the hardest that I probably had to, mm. to learn. That's a good one. Um, and I largely agree with that. The, the, the workload isn't awful. It's the, a lot of the workload is not teaching related. Um, but, and I just, I'm not a paperwork kind of person. I, I just, I'm bad at that. And I, my, AD, my ADHD... Um, flares up and I have to go and just walk around and do something else um, so when I'm like doing heaps of marking or doing heaps of unrelated paperwork really you know, grinds me um, other than that I don't know I guess the biggest challenge is um, I just really really enjoy being in the classroom and talking to students and interacting with students having a good time so and like I you know as much as people sometimes complain about teaching as a job, I, I honestly think it's the best job in the world. I couldn't think of myself doing anything else. Um, Agreed. But I don't know. It's, I suppose it's just the stuff that the, takes you away from the, that. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the dealing with the stuff takes me away from that. And also when I'm in class, um, st sticking to time frames rather than having random conversations <laughs> about stuff that comes yeah. up in the class and students have really interesting and awesome questions. Um, that you want to go, oh, that's great, let's talk about that for 20 minutes. And you just got to make yourself not have as many of those really interesting interactions because you've got to get through course content, especially in senior yeah. school and also stuff like that. Yeah. I find that challenging to, to get make sure I'm actually teaching everything in proper depth rather than just going off on interesting random tangents that we yeah. might find interesting on the day. 
Right. Yeah, cool. Well, that's our AMA. So our little surprise for you guys, um, we are getting pretty close to now. I think we're up to about 700 close all, to. Almost 700. 700 on Insta. Instagram. Mm. So one request we get all the time, and this came up in the AMA questions, was for a certain teacher to come and uh, be on our videos. I won't, I won't name names, but I'll refer to her as, as K, Kate M. So what we're proposing... No, no, no. K Mulligan. Yeah, <laughs> that gave it away. Um, what, I'm what we're going to do is, if we can get to a thousand, so we get to a thousand followers, we're going to do an AMA, which is going to be Ask Mulligan Anything. Yeah, uh, ooh, that's good. Ask Mulligan Anything. A -M -A -Ask and Mulligan. so she'll be that on works. here, on a video, finally, to answer your questions hashtag, from Mulligan. Hashtag feature Miss Mulligan. Yeah, yeah. do it again, definitely. All right, see so you guys, we'll have a new skill next week. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Geography Explained Online. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get Dinger. notified Dinger. anytime. Dinger. It's not actually on the page where I watch the video, I realised, so we were wrong. I don't, I don't know how YouTube works. <laughs> hit the ding and um, keep notified when we put out new videos. We'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, wait, wait. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Just you. It's your decision. <laughs> God damn it, I was trying to hold it the whole time. I couldn't hold it. I was so close. We gotta try that again. Uh...